Once again, uh, our topic for our lesson uh, is whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. This will be part two uh, of our lesson uh, that we began a few weeks ago. Romans chapter number 14. And uh, we will begin. Uh, uh, we're going to be studying the whole chapter 1 through 23, those verses. And we're picking up uh, around where we uh, left off at. Uh, we're going to start at verse number 7. And prior to, we talked about uh, the difficulty in understanding uh, holidays and how awkward it is to be around family, things of that nature. And to understand uh, that we uh, have to go through these things. Uh, some celebrate certain holidays, some don't. But... We have studied that if it is regarded unto the Lord, uh, it is uh, often unto the Lord and not some false God, uh, or if it's not uh, offered unto uh, an image of falseness, then we understand that an uh, individual uh, may do such a thing. A person could not come before the Lord. We want to make sure we clarify this. A person could not come before the Lord's children and say he wants to continue to worship Baal, uh, but he's going to call Baal God, uh, Jehovah, and he's going to still uh, attribute to uh, the Lord God the thoughts of Baal. Uh, and that's is why an individual could not uh, do this. Uh, it would be a sin. It's the same way an individual could not do this concerning Christmas and saying it's Christ's birthday. Something to that effect, you know, uh, talking about Thanksgiving and saying, you know, our brethren, the pilgrims brought this day over. Well, see, that, that's not our brethren. The pilgrims is a, a design religion by a man who's dead, uh, who also would have died lost, coming up with different types of religious thoughts. We cannot do such a thing. Uh, we have to stand firm on what the word of God has already said. But what Romans is talking about, as we discussed previously, if an individual is uh, saying that they have a day that they want to honor Almighty God in his proper image, in the image that he proposes to us, and uh, it falls on days when people are doing other things, such as we just name it Christmas or what have you, and an uh, individual cannot judge that person because he regards it to the Lord and not to Baal or Ashtaroth or some false image uh, like uh, Allah, which I'm using the term Allah. They can say all day in the Muslim belief that they're talking about God, but they're not because the God we serve does not promote giving a certain number of virgins to anyone for any deed done good or bad. So we don't have that type of a system. We don't have any such type of configuration of language also. So we see here also uh, in verse 7 we start off, for none of us, he says, why should we not judge each other in that way? What is the purpose? For none of us live it to himself. And no man died to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be Lord both of the living and the dead. So we understand this is why Christ died. Now someone may say, well, uh, he wasn't already uh, the Lord of the living and the dead. Yes, he created both those that were dead and those that were alive. But Jesus, remember, came as a man. It's very important that you and I remember that G and whoever listening to this information, Jesus came in flesh. He is the creator. He is the image of God, but he came concealed in flesh. And he walked as a man on earth. He lived as a man. He breathed as a man. He died as a man. The difference is he has been resurrected as a man that will live forever, but he is the first. So he shows, okay, I ruled over the living because I came from heaven. And now I can show you I'm also the man who rules over the dead because I'm the only one that has had the power to lift up from the dead and live again. Now, they had some individuals who rose on the day that Jesus rose from the dead. The difference is 
Those individuals died again. Lazarus rose from the dead while Jesus was still alive. The widow of Nain's son rose from the dead while Jesus is, is still alive. And we have to also understand that in addition to that particular thought, uh, we have a concept that Jesus Christ is the one that gave that resurrection because he says, I'm the resurrection and the life. And we understand that thought and we can accept that. But the power is, is that Jesus Christ himself, one has to understand is the only individual who was dead and came alive again. He's the only individual. It said in Revelation, the same thing. I was dead and now I've become alive. And Jesus was as dead as dead could be. What does it mean to die in the sense of having been in the flesh? When your spirit your soul is taken from your body and your body lies in a solid state with no more life in it. That is what we call death. It is referred to as sleep because the body sleeps. Whether the body is burnt with fire and disintegrate into the air, it's still called a sleep because if it had remained together, it would be lifeless. That's what death is and that is what Jesus did. He died. His spirit his soul had no sins attached to it like you and I. When we sin, the sins are not attached to our flesh only. They are marked on the soul. That's why the Lord is going to destroy our bodies so that you and I can live forever because the sins will be destroyed in the body as he destroyed Christ's body. When it says destroy Christ's body, this is where a lot of people get confused at. It doesn't mean the body was disintegrated. It means the body became lifeless. And brethren, for you and I to understand this concept, this is how you and I know an individual who is on the earth not honoring God properly is lifeless and that he does not have the Holy Spirit in it. That means lifeless. And that's why they are called dead. That's why they're called dead. Because although they're alive, moving around, breathing, saying hello, maybe even help you out like a doctor or nurse, but they are dead spirits. So that's what death means. It doesn't mean that the body has to uh, be destroyed and turned into powder. It just means no life in it. No spirit, your spirit. And therefore, if your spirit in the body has not the Holy Ghost in it, guess what? You are called dead. You're lifeless. And that's the thing we have to understand. That's what separates us from the world. That's what separates us from other human beings uh, that are around the world who have false belief systems because we are alive with the Holy Spirit in us. And someone who's searching for God, he's still not alive yet. She's still not alive yet. They're asking questions about God. They're coming to service in order to try to be able to uh, connect with God, but they're still not alive. They're not alive yet until the Holy Spirit is poured in them and they have life poured in them. Then and only then are they alive. And so now we understand that what he's saying is Christ then therefore because he resurrected from a state of being separate from his body. And it's not that we have to continue to understand in our mind is that Jesus Christ uh, left his body. That means his body was dead. It wasn't alive. It wasn't preserved. It is dead. It is still laying in a state. It has not began to fully decompose with all the skin and stuff. You can kill anybody. Any one of us could die. Any one of us could die. And in three days, man, they keep, they, they have uh, weights and stuff. Uh, even without a proper embalming. They have all types of methods. Uh, people used to die, man. They wash up and, and you stay in your house sometimes. A lot of people couldn't handle that. Back in the day, you don't have no money. That's the only way it was going to go now. Bury in the backyard. They ain't buried that same day. Cleaned you up. Or if you had wounds, maybe that profuse out and blood was oozing out. Okay, that may be something difficult to deal with. But the idea is that, just as they mentioned about darkness, they had washed and cleaned up. And they had to send for Peter to come. I mean, he didn't have no jet or no car. He couldn't just jump up there and come there in no 15, 20 minutes. So we have to understand is the body begins to decompose inside, but it does not deteriorate into dust till some long time after. And, that, and, and that's why by being exposed. So when the scriptures say he did not see corruption, Jesus' body stepped upon a cloud and left. It did not corrupt like David's 
uh, like yours or mine if we should die before the Lord return. To so mean well, if you, you, I don't care how well you still are coughing up. I don't care what you do. You look at a mummy today, if they get the best preserved mummy ever, it still decomposed. It still began to tear. That's not how the people's arms don't look like a mummy's arm. My arm don't look like a mummy's arm. I mean, I don't care how slim you get, you'll never look like no mummy because it has began a deterioration process. And we're saying that to say, this is the thrust that the scripture is saying. He is the Lord or the ruler of the dead. Why? Here's the key. Because he rose again. How was he the ruler then of the living on the earth? Because his life never died. See, all men die spiritually. When you sin, you die. That's just it. Every man has sinned and died. Spiritually, that he is died. Enoch definitely sinned. He sinned. But his walk was with the Lord. The Lord said, come on. He did not taste of death. Many uh, people get excited when they Enoch didn't taste of death. They hear Elijah didn't taste of death. It's going to be some of us on the earth that are saints. When the Lord come back, we'll never taste death. We'll never experience the death phase. It's a phase. It's a phase you go through. You want to experience it. So a person has to understand Jesus, though, tasted death for every man. According to the book of Hebrews. He tasted death. So when someone looks at him and says, well, man, he did die. That don't make him like holier than Jesus. Jesus has to taste death. So Enoch will be able to live forever by Christ raising from death. So he has to taste the death. Enoch didn't do that. Elijah didn't do that. We have to understand there'll be saints on the earth when Christ comes back that will never experience that phase of death. And so we understand that and we look forward now to the joy of what does it mean him being law of both the dead and living. Verse 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou say that not thy brother? As clearly as at not making him nothing. Because he does eat of a certain food or he doesn't. Now, brother would be a member of the church. Now, we already said that. In the faith, he's in the faith. And going back to the first lesson, this is the second one. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. He said, so how could you cast them out as being nothing, make them not something, when you and he will stand before the judgment seat of Christ? For it is written, as I live, said the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God and see now in this instance we have to understand what this is talking about this is a statement that says every knee will stand before the Lord God Almighty and bow and give reverence regardless that they hated God guts on earth because the whole theme is the system will be they won't know well you know I, I knew that was him I hope he was going to cut me slack I hope he was going to let me go mm mm he will confess, yeah, he is Lord over all. That's not going to let him make you come in. He's still going to cast him aside. Just like a policeman. What do they do when a police? When a policeman really come, no matter how many bullets you've been shooting, acting crazy, when you realize I could go to jail and I could live, maybe get a pill case or something, don't throw my weapon down and say, I surrender. When you come out, the policeman is the man. He tell you, get down on him. You just shot bullets at him. You put cuffs on him. See, you're reverencing him. You're honoring him. He's still going to throw you in jail. And if you kill somebody, you're still going to die. But there's a certain point of reverence that is received. And the Lord God Almighty says, everybody going to do this to me. They're going to bow down and confess. You, God, you're the one. I have sinned. I'm not worthy. But the key is the saints. Well, no, when we come in for the law, we'll honor him because we love him. Brother uh, Jim, you can just talk right into it. I got it on, brother. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's that's, that's, that's uh, profound uh, what you're talking about because as I was riding up, mm -hmm. uh, I was just thinking about the, the conversation I had with, with uh, another brother in uh, another congregation. Uh -huh. and, uh, and I started reading Corinthians uh, 10 uh -huh. because they, they had mentioned expedience and Paul asked the question he says now, you know uh, it ties into Romans 14 he said why is I'm judged by a brother he said, he said, he said in, in, in Corinthians in Lela, he says to well, what, what you at, my brother? We want to follow with you. Uh, so, Corinthians 1st Corinthians 10. 10 okay my brother alright 1st Corinthians 10 alright it begins and began at 
and uh, I say 20, 20, we're gonna start at twenty five, but I want to conclude at uh, twenty nine. It says where. It says, whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat. Ask no man, ask no questions for consign's sake. For the earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof. If, if, if any of them that believe it not bid you to a feast, and yet be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you eat, ask no questions for conscience sake. Mm -hmm. He said, but if any man said unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for, for, uh, for his sake mm -hmm. that showeth it, and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the footing thereof. Mm -hmm. He says, this this is the verse I was I was I was thinking about. Con he said, consigns. He's talking about consigns say, I say, not thy own consigns, but the but of the other. That's right. For why is my liberty judged of another man consigns? Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? That's right. Yeah. My question is. Because a brother is weak mm -hmm. in his conscience. Yeah, yeah. Paul says, Why is I'm judged? Why is my liberty judged of his conscience? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the question is uh, if a brother's weak, mm -hmm. if a brother's weak in his, in, in his conscience, he said, me, I can't eat this food because he don't eat it or whatever. Because he's weak in that area. Mm -hmm. why, why, why is my liberty judged? Yeah, that's right. That's a good point. Right. It's because, his, because he don't want to eat it. <laughs> but I have the liberty to eat it. Right, exactly. So exactly. why is my liberty judged? Yeah, that's right. That's, that's an excellent point. Yeah, and that's exactly what he's saying. Yeah, that's exactly um, what he's saying. And, uh, and uh, no, no. it's... it's I won't say it later. I'm lost. Can y'all put me back on track? Oh, we we, we come from uh he, he was saying in Romans 14, he read, he said, But why doest thou judge thy brother? Mm -hmm. Or why does thou set now thy brother? For we shall all stand before God, before the judgment seat of God. And I think when you read that, where you was at, you stopped at what? You stopped at 12? You said, was, you stopped at 12, right? Oh, uh, yes. You stopped at 12. And it says, every man shall give an account of himself to God. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I was thinking about that. I was thinking about that on the way in. It comes from a past, past, uh, a formal uh, conversation I had with another brother in the conversation. Mm -hmm. If something was done and he's somebody by, by experience, he shouldn't do this and he shouldn't do that. And that's, and that's the scripture they use to go to. This is they use to, 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 to defend their point mm -hmm. about a weaker brother consigns. I mean, a weaker brother consigns. Mm -hmm. It's because it's about the weak and the strong. And Paul asks in Corinthians well, uh, 10, he says, Why is my liberty judged on another man consigns? Uh, why, why, why is my liberty judged? Because he is weak in the area. I know I can eat meat, but he said I can't. Mm -hmm. And Paul said, Well, why you judge your brother? Either or. Why do a brother judge why do a brother that don't eat meat judge a brother that do? And why do a brother that do eat meat judge a brother that don't? Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. And so Paul says, "Why is my liberty? I know I can eat me. Why is I'm why is I'm judged of another man by another man's conscience? You know what I'm saying? He's not judged a man. I mean, he, he's he, he, he's judged by man, but God know he can eat it. Mm -hmm. But because he says, but he said because this brother weak, mm -hmm. don't do it. But don't do it." 
and, 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 and that's why it says we all got sin to see, uh, judgment seat for God. I mean, we, we got all sitting, uh, we got got to face God. We got all got stand for the judgment seat of God. It's not that I call out eight mate, it's because my brother, because his conscience is weak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm judged. I'm judged. He judged me, and God said, "Well, it's because of you." That's why he's judging you, because you ate meat, and he don't eat meat. Mm -hmm. And he's judging you, and, ju and, and, and by him judging me, causes him to sin. Because mm -hmm. God said, judge no man. That's right. See what I'm saying? Amen. And, 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 and Paul said, well, why is my liberty judged? Yeah, that's exactly what he said. That's right. I have that freedom. Yeah, because he, I have that freedom. Yeah, it's because that, I'm judged because he's a weak man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm judged because he's a weak man. Mm -hmm. He's... Because he weakened his knowledge. Mm -hmm. He's not studying. Mm -hmm. Paul said, study, show yourself approved unto God. Mm -hmm. yeah, amen. And so, so it's because it's this weak brother here. Or whoever, whoever's weak in the area where you, where, where you know you can do certain things. Mm -hmm. Or certain, uh, certain, uh, certain things. And he said, no, you can't do that. Because he's weak. Because he don't have the knowledge. Yeah. He's not studying right. He's not, he's not getting in the scriptures, you know what I'm saying, to, 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 to get the information of God, yeah, I can do what, I, I can eat meat. Amen. And Paul says, well, he said, he come back and tell you, he said, you know what, if you do it, do it unto God. Yes. But Paul didn't eat because Paul tried to say, trying to try, the reason why he didn't do it is because it was an early stage in the church. He was trying to save souls. Mm -hmm. But today we ought to know better. Amen. Today we ought to know better. Amen. God bless you, my brother. Well said. God bless you. And you know, this is good. This is why we have Bible study. Because we want to uh, help everybody to understand how to receive each other. How we should receive one another. And love each other. Because that's what Paul says. But not to ourselves. Uh, we are of the Lord and as we're going to start right, right here where our brother was talking from uh, as he said why the liberty judge look at if you will verse 30 like brother John just talked for if by still in 1 Corinthians 10 or uh, for if by grace I'll be a partaker so grace as brother John's well taught he's allowed he's allowed because of grace grace allows us uh, he says, why am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? If, if, if we go back to, to, to at least the American drama, hollow, uh, 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 a, a hollow view in the mentality of Christmas. He's thanking Christ, though, as he's eating his dinner. He's thanking Christ for all he's done. He's thanking Christ for being born and coming to the earth. He didn't say what day he was born. He didn't say I'm thankful. So, He's giving thanks. So this is what Paul is saying. So he's saying, uh, I give thanks. If I do that, what was the problem? Then he says in verse 31, whether therefore you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So whatever you do, make sure God gives the glory. Now, as we pointed out at the beginning, you can't come up here talking about, oh, Ashtaroth, I will change your name, the female deity, to Jehovah God. Now, nah, see, you're not going to be able to do that one because that's not the image. See, that's, that's the problem with Hazem. I said, why you have a problem with the Muslim? They say, Allah, no, no, no. See, you're saying something a specific way and attributing it to Muhammad. We can't run with you on nothing in that area. We can't say that Christmas is Christ's birthday. We can't do that. Do you have that? We can't sing, oh, Christmas tree. To the tree, like they did in honor to, to actually honor it. You gotta watch what you're saying, your, your voice, what you're saying. What are the words that you're saying? So, see, you can't give God thanks by calling him something his name. Now, we already studied that. They want to forget God's name for Baal. No, I'm not going to do that. See, it, 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 this is what an individual has to understand. So, if the individual is doing it, I can't say he is doing that. I can't judge him. If I see him eating, uh, Easter eggs, whatever. I can't say he believes in the power of fertility. And I've been mad eating the egg. I can't do that because I got a liberty to eat the egg. Because I got grace to eat the egg. Even though somebody may look at it and judge it, I, God give me grace because I'm saying thank you for it. Here's the problem though. He says, verse 32, here's where the problem comes in. 
Give non offense. Offense does not mean, and when we see it, we usually think, you hurt my feelings. No, no. Offense means to cause me to stumble. If I put a chair in front of you and you walk and I cause you to flip over and fall in your spiritual walk, that would be like putting a sin in front of you and causing you to flip. See, if I think there's something wrong with the, with the holidays or something that affects a certain food to eat, here's what he said. Now, verse 32 is to the one with the conscience that says, I can. And also to the one who says you can't. He has to know what to say. Give not offense neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. See, because if I say because you don't do the holiday, you on your way to hell. Because you don't have faith in God. See, I can't do that one either. We already discussed that in the first lesson. I can't. Why? Because that's a stumbling block. Now you telling me I got to do the holiday. And if I don't, some kind of way, I'm not honoring God right. Nah. Somebody said he might get it right for you. He may never get it right. He may never want to touch that holiday. And other one may never want to let it go. If he handles it right, and he has it to himself, we're going to read further in the text. That's where he handled it. The reason why individuals don't develop, and they always get these kind of subjects wrong, is because, as a brother said, they do not study. Always too busy to go to church. Always too busy for Bible study. For whatever the reason is, they don't get it. And now that's what you're going to be judged on at the judgment. Because you didn't know the right way to handle it. That's why I would name the lesson as the text said. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. What faith? Not your belief system. Your belief in what God says is okay. Paul already said, I got grace to eat this. So why are you going to judge me? At the same time he says, okay, now remember don't give offense. He says, verse 33, even as I plead, and this is what Brother Jeff found out about Paul, all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many that they may be saved. Paul knows I can do certain things. I can eat certain things. But the profit is not financial in all instances. Profit deals with it benefits me. Yeah. I want to eat this certain food. This is a food that they clearly offer to the God Murdoch, but I'm going to eat this because I, I love it. It's a good flavor. Yeah. Uh, I know how it's designed. I know why they got the strains around or whatever, but I'm finna eat it. But Paul says, okay, now I got somebody with me with a weaker conscience, then that's going to profit me, but it's not going to profit him. Yeah. So I'm not going to leave it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it on. I'm not going to touch it. Yeah. They said, well, give me the other thing over there. Well, Paul, you used to get that now. I won't, just give me the other thing. You know, because he's like, I got my brother with me. It'll be shaky on this kind of stuff. And that's what he's dealing with because that's what love is about. That's what Christianity is about. The people that go, look, I would do my thing. Look, my name's just Steve, and I'm going to do my thing because I'm not living for no man. But Jesus, look here, you don't even know what you're talking about because you totally have missed it. It's written, whatever it's written, brethren, when you go for the judgment, that's what God's going to talk about. God's going to talk about the things in this book. Not your history book, not your rocket science book, not your playbook from football. He's going to talk about what's in this book. He's not talking about how you being a team captain cause you to love people. He's going to talk about what's in this book. Amen. And this is what you're going to be judged on. What he said, and it is your job to read it, to study it, to love it, and to live it. And that's what he's going to talk about at the judgment. Okay, Sister Lynn. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I want to get an understanding, brother. Okay. You saying, you just said, if you... And like I say, me and him together, we go somewhere and we know that they offered this to an island. Mm -hmm. And I want to eat it. Mm -hmm. But I don't eat it because I got my brother with me and it might make him weak. Mm -hmm. But uh, verse 26 telling me whether my brother is with me or not, I should not eat it anyway because I got the spirit in what me. What verse did you point to? First Corinthians verse, not 26, 28. Whether he's with me or not for my own concentration, I shouldn't eat it because they say do not eat anything that's to ours. If I was. Well, no, eating. see, my brother's a good question. What brother Jeff pointed out is, uh -huh. is this verse is talking about for the other person's conscience. Exactly. See what it says? Look at verse 20. That's what he was teaching us. But if any man say unto you, this is often a sacrifice unto idols. Eat not this, eat not for his sake that showed it. So see, you say you go to eat, you, you usually eat that because you know it ain't nothing to it. It is nothing but chicken because the Lord made it. But Jeff with you and Jeff thinks different. So you won't eat it because of Jeff's conscience. The way Jeff thinks, you already know Jeff's a little shaky about that. He used to be a Muslim and he's scared of pork, so I'm not going to eat them pork chops. But they always know you always get pork chops. 
You see, but the idea is you want for his sake. For the earth is the laws and the foods thereof. He said, the earth is the laws. And all of them belong to the law. He only said, don't eat the meat for a certain teaching lesson. And he's done with that lesson. But he says in verse 29, conscience, I say not thine own, not lenders, but Jeff's, but of the other. That would be Jeff. For why is my liberty judge of another man's conscience? So he will, Jeff will judge you. He will pass judge. He will condemn you. He will say you shouldn't have done that. And that's what Paul says. He says, and I'm, and I'm basically throwing the bone out there for him to attack me. So he's saying, why is my conscience judge of another man? Why? He says, that's why I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to produce that type of an atmosphere. Because, yeah, he's going to say something. Because Jeff thinks it's something. I'm just metaphorical. It's wrong with eating pork. Okay, that's how he used to be a Jew, maybe. He thinks there's something wrong with eating pork. So if you love Jeff and you're not seeking Linda's profit, mm -hmm. that she can have a good pork chop, then I'm going to stop and leave that alone. That would be for the Christmas tree and anything. That's anything that I have a liberty to do. And remember, now I got to do it right. Mm -hmm. But I have a liberty to do it. If I'm looking at this person's conscience, which is my requirement by God, but at the same time, Jeff can't rise up and say, look at these pork chops, she's a devil. See, because uh, the first six verses of Romans 14 going to get Jeff. He doesn't have the authority to do that. He can't. Now, he can go and say it's bothering him, but he can't tell you that you're not a Christian for doing it. What happens at this point and what makes it puzzling to us is this, the four-letter word, L-O-V-E, brethren. Remember we talked about in the last lesson, saints struggle with love. It's one of the things that keep us out of heaven. If we heard something for 40 years, we're going to have a problem in year 41 for change. Because we've, we've accepted it 40 years. And that's why many of us are not getting into heaven. Because whoever taught it to us, it doesn't matter what they thought, it's not in the Bible. We have a problem with change because it takes love to change. It's not about an option. It takes love to change. The only reason God saved us is because of love, what Christ asked him to do. That's why he wanted to kill us and we deserve to die. Because we don't understand sin. We deserve to die. It is because of change that we will not get to heaven. We will go, well, how can that be? Because why is it bothering you? He's not your son. See, that's the other side of the coin. That's what we talk about. He's God's servant. You can't judge him. And see, that's what Jeff said. You can't judge another man for eating something. First, this is the text. Romans 14, he's not your servant. Number one lesson of judgment. He's not yours. You can't go judge McDonald's servant if the owner of McDonald's want to find him. He said, well, I don't like the way he served. Then he may tell you, well, man, I appreciate you don't come back to my restaurant no more. You know, people got a right to tell you that on the earth anyway. They got right to tell you, don't come back. Because I'm not fine, Billy. And I think Billy did a good job. If you don't like it here, don't come back. Now, I'm telling you, they got a lot of owners that say, and Matt say, no, nah, we're not fine, bitch. He's my servant. So you can't judge him. If you don't like that, then you don't need to be in the church of Christ. Because that's what it's all about. You got these Jehovah's Witnesses rising on top of y'all celebrating. Man, you're not even in the church. Your soul is lost. See, we don't have enough strength to tell them that, but we'll tell our brother for having a criminal tree. He's lost. But that's who lost a Jehovah's Witness. That's who lost. Who don't know nothing about God. Don't believe in hell. Don't believe in nothing God say. Other than foolishness they make up. So you can't judge your sir. At the same time, he can't judge you for not wanting to participate. That's the line, brother. It's drawn by God. And it don't matter what preacher, elder, Bible teacher, deacon say, here, we can read that answer. And that's what this text says. He says, so I'm going to seek the prophet. And I'm going to seek the prophet of Jeff by not eating a pork chop that day. Paul said, if it come down to it, I won't eat meat no more, ever. As long as the world is standing, say, if it's going to cause that many people, if somebody keep walking around fighting, everybody seeing Paul, everybody say, well, I won't touch it. And that's what he said. Now, Jeff's hand still up. Go ahead, Jeff. Yes. Right there, Sister Paul's in the back. Now, hold on, Sister Lim, do you have another part to your question? No, I, I want to address her. What, 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 what Paul was, yeah, what Paul was. Okay, well, hang on, let's let her. Now, I'm saying that is that, that becomes a part. We got to judge ourselves. Yes. Before we even think about doing something. We think about other, but we got to have it in us to judge ourselves whether we're going to do something or not. Yes. We got to encourage it. That's right. And if you're. 
That's right. And if your faith is not based on what God says, see, see, what's up is not a faith, the faith of God. What did God say about it? The earth is the fullness thereof. There's nothing wrong with the heart. If you got blood pressure issues, you might want to reconsider. Past that is nothing. Yeah. That's the law's word. The other person, stand down, don't you eat. And I won't eat in front of you to hurt you. But don't tell me if I eat a pork chop at my house, I'm going to hell because that's it. I'm not going to discuss it with you what I do in my house. Yeah. That is the faith of God. And whoever does not use that faith, but I'm going to eat it, I'm going to not eat because Jeff don't eat. See, that's not the faith of God. That's Jeff's faith. So I said, well, yeah, but he has right. Yeah, but see, I'm not doing it because of God. I'm doing it because I see Jeff. So I'm following Jeff. So as Jeff go left, I'm going to go left, and I'm lost. I'm going to eat it because Linda eat it. But I'm not really doing it because of God. I just, you know, pretty basic. So it's a little pretty sharp, you know, pretty basic. What she said, I take heed. I'm not following the faith of God. I'm following the faith of Linda in God. That's not the faith of God. Well, when Linda died, I know what I'm going to do. That should happen. I must have looked into the text, as the brother said, myself, and studied and see, okay, I have a scripture to show I have liberty to do this. I have a scripture to show I have liberty to not participate. That's the faith of God. And if you don't know that text, you're doing it because you're seeing someone else. Even if you can, we're going to read this before we call, brother. Even if you can, you're going to go to hell for doing it. Because Linda did it. That's book chapter. We're going to get to that first before we close out. I know you're talking about that. That's in the text. Okay, go ahead, brother. And I, yeah, I want to address her. But in the text, he's uh, he's saying, yeah, he's saying, he's saying, if a, if any man say unto you, this is a, uh, this is offered a uh, sacrifice unto idols. It's a, we just use, we just use an example. Put like this. The guy, I mean, the, the man that offered, Paul says, for his consign's sake, uh -huh. for his son consign's sake, he's lost because he, because he already he eaten, he's eating, uh, uh, he's eating, uh, he, he's eating, uh, 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 what does it say, the, because uh, he offering uh, a sacrifice, because he, he, he offering food to the idols anyway, exactly. so, so he already lost. Paul said, to save that man, mm -hmm. I'm not going to eat it. Mm -hmm. To save the guy, because he's trying to he's trying to save, like in verse, verse, verse 30, 33, he says, to please all men in all things, I seek not my own profit, but the profit of many. Mm -hmm. he's, he's trying to save people mm -hmm. by saying, you know, I'm not going to eat that because I, I know you don't know no better. I'm not gonna eat your food you you uh you, you said before me. Right. I'm gonna eat this. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna eat that because you already said you already told me for your you already told me that is you offering to the idols. Mm -hmm. So I ain't gonna eat that that's because true. of your sake. Uh, that's right. And that's a weak conscience. And on the flip side, when I, when I say brethren in the church, yes. like the Christmas trees yes. or stuff like that, it's the same thing. He got a weak conscience. He don't know no better. He don't know he can do certain things. He have liberty to do it. But he don't do it because he thinks it's a sin. Because he hasn't studied the scripture. For his sake, I am judged because he thinks the way he thinks. So in order to, in order to keep him from judging me, and he, and he, and he sitting in the seat, in the judgment seat of God, and God said, why are you judging your brother? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it while he's around. Amen. Or Paul. Or, or Paul. Paul says, even if, if the world saying I wouldn't do it because he's trying to save. You know, he know he can do it, but he just won't do it because he's trying to save his brother or sister. So that's why he don't do the things he do. A brother and sister can have a weak conscience in the in the, in, the, in the church, but we but we uh. Because we love this brother, we want to see him make it. We don't want him to judge us on what we uh, we, uh, we what we have uh, liberty in doing. Amen. So so therefore, God said, "I'm coming to you because you the one shit, you the one started it. You, you the prime example. He's doing it because of you. He's judging you because of what you've done." That's right. Amen. Well said, my brother. God bless. And you know we have to look at we're talking about. 
three different areas. Uh, I see Sister Paul's and uh, Brother Craig will get you out, Sister Paul. Three areas are mentioned in verse 32, 1 Corinthians 10. Three areas. And we talked about this prior in the first lesson. Three areas. And the key is, is here are the three areas. One, a Jew has never been an idolater if he's been faithful to God. Amen. Those at this time frame. He's, he's been worshiping God only. That's all he knows is God. But he's got certain things he's going to do, or he believes, that Paul's not care what I want to cause him to stop. Yeah, the Gentiles are straight up off dollars. They've never been exposed to God as far as acceptance. See, when you say not exposed to God, brother, we got to understand something. When a person hears about who God is, you're supposed to want to tell the servant that he's still your father. He still made you. You have to accept that. You have to come serve. We're not going to get into all the details of how to worship God and how to give. You, that's not the problem. You haven't accepted that Jehovah God is only God. You're a Philistine. Same way in Christianity. If you're a Baptist, we have to get into all that different details about what's going on. You need to say you need to get baptized. That's as far as we really need to go. We'll go other places. But that's why we need to go because why would we go into the other details? You already lost or you rejected God's one way of salvation. That's what he means by those that die without the law. You didn't never want to come to God. You want to worship man. Everybody gonna get in no three feasts a year. Details about who 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 wants to marry. Everybody gonna get in that with you, dude. You lost. So yeah, you're not gonna know all that, but you do know you rejected God. So he says, I'm gonna judge you based on what you did. No, you knew it was wrong when you robbed your brother. You knew it was wrong when you slept with your brother's wife, and you're a brother, you're a Philistine brother. So I'm gonna kill you on that. That's what we're not understanding. It isn't about that. You can't prove to no man God exists. There's nothing you can do past the word. You can't prove to any man that God exists. You must use the words of God to prove to him. And if he doesn't want to get baptized, he's dead. He don't have to know nothing about why he can't use an instrument. You can tell him. If you want to talk for him, he is lost, brethren. He doesn't want to accept Christ as the only Savior. He says he came, but he doesn't want to worship him according to the image. And it don't go no further than that. And this is what's wrong with even the saint trying to teach. He has to understand, man, there's no hope for this person. They are saying there is many other churches, which is a lie. So you got a third person, which is the church of God. That's the Christian. That individual, as Romans 14 said, he comes to the faith and he thinks he should only eat vegetables. He's still saved. That's what we're talking about. And he know you can do about it. He said, I've never touched meat since I became a Christian. Well, that to stay out of his business. He don't want to eat no meat. But he can't judge you for eating all the meat your mouth can hold. Nobody can do it. Neither of you are each other's servant. And this is where the Lord said, now I'm going to see who I'm going to put in hell and I'm going to put in heaven. Because they can't even love each other. You think I can't have Jeff eat nothing but croutons? I can't have Jeff eat croutons the day he died. Oh, and if he said, I don't mention eat croutons, oh, you're not teaching. I just, I just believe, okay, oh, good. Oh, good. I, I'm eating chicken. And they go, okay, well, Jeff, we're going to eat croutons because you're here. And that's it. Now I go home and eat no more croutons. And that's because I love him. But if he loved me, he needs not bother me about what I'm going to eat. See, that's the problem. See, because Jeff just don't get no pass card. Because if he starts to teach everybody should be eating croutons, he in trouble. It's like people who teach, we're going to bring the Toys of Us truck to the church. See, you done lost your mind because now you brought that into the kingdom. That's not the doctrine of Christ. If you want to do that, do that at your house. Don't bring that into the church because that's not the doctrine Amen. of Jesus Christ. See, now you've made it a doctrine of Christ and now you and your don't matter how much liberty you got because you will cause us to stump. You're going to make us not accept your thought. You can't do that. And somebody said, well, how can people still love and have those different things just the same way and Pacific Asian, Asian Pacific Islander can love an African American in the Church of Christ. The same way an ex Ku Klux Klan can love an ex Black Muslim in the Church of Christ. Totally going to look different from each other. That's how, because we love God. That's what we do. And that's what all the saints need to understand. We got to learn to love the Lord. Oh, thank you so far for waiting so patiently. You know, I was over in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. All right. uh -huh, touching on the, uh, the verse that we were talking about in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 10, uh, 31 and so. 
um, I was looking over here in verse eight, I mean chapter eight, and it says in verse seven, How be it that there is not in every man that knowledge? Yes. And the question is, what knowledge? Okay. And then we go back up to verse six, mm -hmm. it says, But to us there is but one God, mm -hmm. the Father, of whom are all things, mm -hmm. and we in him and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Amen. And then uh, when we go down a little further uh, into the uh, chapter, verse 11, uh, let me start at verse 10. Verse 10 says, For if any man see thee which has knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak, be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols. Mm -hmm. And verse 11 says, and through, the, that, and through thy knowledge should the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. Say perish, then. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then verse 12 says, but when ye sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Mm. So Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a support of, and I, you know, one thing I, I am disappointed in is that being a member, and for years we've been taught totally incorrect, incorrect to whereas it has caused some of us to, to sin. Mm -hmm. Not only against our brothers, but even against God because of the belief that's been given to us. Mm -hmm. And it's the belief of another man rather than the belief of God. And here it talks about the knowledge. If we know there is one law, one faith, one baptism, then we, we know who we're speaking of. We're speaking mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. But when we teach a man other things to make him think otherwise mm -hmm. and... and uh, I guess you can say, in a sense, it's a weak brother, because mm -hmm. we all at one time were weak until we became more knowledgeable to Christ's word. Mm -hmm. Some of us have gotten lost into that knowledge that has been given to us from other men mm -hmm. in the church Amen. on such subjects as what we're talking about now really? and really? other subjects that are so, so screwdrivery, if that's not a word, I just made that up. <laughs> that, you know, they just drove the, 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 the screwdriver and the, and the, and the, and the yeah, you know, you just drove it in there to, it's so hard for you to think otherwise because of the way it's been taught. Now the Bible says here that we do make another man uh, sin because of an offense that's not even there. Right. We've put that offense there, sure. you know, as far as as a Christmas tree, yeah. as far as uh, eating pork, yeah. as far as whatever our little hang ups that we have right. that we've come into knowledge of. We have we have screwed around with it to yeah. where the head of the screw is broken off yeah. because of the lesson that had been taught to oh, us yeah. for so many years. Yeah. And being babes in Christ, we number one are grateful to God that we have become members of the Christ, of Christ. Right. If we become members of the body, but what we lack and what we fail and what we, we, we are weak into is what we're being taught. Mm -hmm. Because I know, I know, and I'm quite sure everybody in here know that we're supposed to study to yes. show ourselves approved and we're right. studying for ourselves. But even in coming to Bible class mm -hmm. and sitting amongst other brothers and sisters and being taught certain things, our minds have been washed with some things that should not have been taught to us. And now it is so hard, it is so hard to unwash, to remove that stain that has been put on our brains as we, we grow as Christians. Because we, some of us have come in here when we were children. Some of us have come in here as spouses to spouses. Some of us have come in here as single people from from wherever we developed from, and we have taken on this Christianity, which I love. Don't get me wrong, because I, I die Christian, just like them Baptist folks say they'll die. Ba I'm gonna die Christian. If God say his, if it's God's will, I, I want to go into the grave knowing that I was serving the one and true God 
Jesus Christ himself. But we have messed up along the line of many a folk in their brain thinking, in their spiritual brain thinking, on, on a subject such as this, this meat, because this meat can get hung up with a whole lot of other things, you know, the right, Christmas, the exactly. Christmas tree and all that. But, 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 but see, we, 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 what we have to understand, yes, we do have the liberty to do that, but when we were first taught this, this liberty was taken away from us to say, you're not supposed to do that. That's just it. You're going to go to hell if you do it, and that's just it. We don't want to talk about it no more. Let's move on to another scripture. It was mistaught. And, and now so many people in the Church of Christ have taught it to their friends and so forth, condemning others for this. But here is not a condemnation from us. And we're trying to make it one to say that we can judge you because you have your meat or you have your tree or you have all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. We brought the world into the church and now it's, it's pretty hard for us to try to get it out because mm -hmm. it's been screwed into our brains, our, our spiritual brain for just touching this subject right here. So, so uh, and then I'm not going against what you all are teaching because what you brought out is the truth now. Mm -hmm. The truth has been taught that it is a liberty. You don't want your brother to stumble. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to do anything in front of your brother that you know going to make him stumble. Mm -hmm. Although it's not a sin not to do it, but for some reason he believed through where he's come from and how he's lived so far that it's causing him to think, oh, we don't supposed to be touching stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know he not, we don't get hung up with that. Mm -hmm. But then you also want to go, I love my brother enough to, to I'm not going to, let's get stuck with this. Well, man, you ain't going to eat it, so I'm going to eat it. Give me your plate. <laughs> well, I'm not going to get stuck there, right, you know. Right. But at the same time, we got to unscrew some things right. that we have really screwed so hard into the spiritual brain that it's hard for us to to uh, catch up with this knowledge that we should have been taught about the first time as far as the truth of how this should have been taught. Mm -hmm. The truth is we do have liberty, but we don't want to make our brothers sin because we have that liberty. Amen. Well said. Now, one thing we have to remember is, is this, and I, I got your hands recorded in my mind. One thing we have to remember is this, saints, is that when something is taught, we have to understand is, is that if the individual isn't listening to everything taught, and they aren't studying either, and they aren't participating as far as mentally there, that that's still the individual's fault. Because uh, there are a lot of churches that teach this perfectly correct. But the problem is, is that you have, to, and I have to understand, is it applies to both people. Now, I want to take a minute. To validate this. And then we're going to wrap up. And we'll pick up another part another time. I'm going to get the hands that, were, that are still on hold. If I come into the church. And I believe. That I'm not supposed to eat meat. This is the thing. Bro. It don't matter. It doesn't matter that my conscience is weak on that. But I'm, I'm in the faith. I'm not weak in the faith. See the text doesn't say I'm weak in the faith. Right. I'm weak in, in what I believe. In the faith. See, that's the we talked about that last lesson. It's not saying I'm weak. My faith is strong. I, I'm in the church. One true church, but I just believe I can't eat meat or pork, whatever. I just use that one. Okay. I still can't judge you. This is the problem with the Christmas tree. This is why the problem people say, sometimes people say it isn't taught right, it is taught right. But you're on the other side of the fence. So if I come in and I say, I don't believe I should touch a Christmas tree, okay. I'm weak in that belief. No, I'm weak because I think the tree is something. It's just a tree. But I still can't judge you for having one. Exactly. See, this is, this is why people say we've been taught wrong. Some people teach false doctrine to this day. They're going to always teach. But the whole church has never taught this wrong. The church of Christ has never taught this wrong, brethren. Now, what church of Christ am I talking about? The bride of Christ. The faithful saints have never taught this wrong. The problem is, what side of the fence are you on? Okay, if I'm a Christmas tree lover, when I come in, I'm going to have a problem with you that don't like it. So I'm wrong. I'm wrong. If I judge you, because the liberty is, you don't have to have it. See, we want to make the liberty, and particularly all the liberty is, I don't have to do that. Just like I can't be judged by the Sabbath days anymore, you can't judge me because I don't want a tree. Are we getting that portion? 
So the one that wants a tree and thinks it's okay, and I still pay God, I offer it to the Lord. I can't tell you nothing about you because you don't want the tree. I could even say you weak because you scared of the tree. See, this is where the person thinks the God is talking about one side. He's talking about both sides. And now the individual who comes into the church and doesn't like the tree and see you with one, he can't judge you. See, this is where we're, it's, the church has always taught it right, the righteous. We just don't want to accept it. And the reason we can't accept it is because nobody asks us to make them come over to our house to look at nothing we got. That's our fault. We shouldn't do that. If you know the person, you're in tune with what the person thinks, then no invite them at that time. You know, no law says you got to invite people at your house at a certain time. So whether it's pork eating, greens eating, Christmas tree, egg dipping, it doesn't matter. As long as I'm not honoring some false god, I cannot judge you if I like it, and I can't judge you if I don't. The problem is, if we came in on the like it, we misunderstood the message. Because we were like, hey, man, yeah, but we were going to listen to the part that was talking to get the person that doesn't like That's our fault. That was our fault. That was our fault. That means we weren't paying attention to the lesson. We weren't studying behind the lesson to make sure we got it. Sometimes we'll study behind a lesson to check the teacher, but we need to study behind a lesson to know if we got it according to God's doctrine, not man. And so neither can judge. The analogy we use of Sister Linda and, and, and Brother uh, Jeff, Jeff can't judge Linda, Linda can't judge Jeff. Jeff shouldn't call Linda to stumble, Linda shouldn't call Jeff to stumble because you go sin against Christ, not. Because if you like it, don't tell nobody. See, now when you start propagating, you're in trouble because you are stepping all on people's consciences. That's a weak church of Christ that does it either way. You're going to hell for having a tree. You're going to heaven for having a tree. <laughs> that's the church of Christ that's messed up on oh, that teacher maybe. So this is why we have to understand because what business is it of yours about another man's sermon? Do you go to other folks' house and say, is your maid cleaning up around the baseboard? Do they work for you? That's what that statement means. That's not your maid. Don't worry about what they do. But she showed me out there. Look, I hide it. Can you please, there you be asked, you leave my home, please. Because you're in my business too much. That's my servant. That's what God is saying. That's my servant. And yeah, I'm going to save him. That's what the first essence said. I'm going to hold him up. I'm going to make him, I'm going to make him make it in. I don't care about the tree he got. No, he's not calling it a God. See, that's why you go to that text all day looking silver and gold. If I'm not praying to the tree, that's it. And I'm telling you, I don't have one, but I'm telling you, I know how to teach it. And I don't care who got one. Just don't call it God. See, this is what them people are calling that thing God. That was their God. No, we got a problem. We, we, we got trouble now. That's false doctrine. When you say something not written, you're the false teacher. Whether it's for or against. Against you, the false teacher, because it's not in the text. Now, Craig, Javier, and then we'll end with Michelle. You good? Okay. All right, so Michelle. I was um, Sister Powers reminded me of something that my husband was mentioning a while back. He was talking about how uh, when he was in the Baptist church when he was younger, a man told him that by the time he was 22, if he didn't get his life together, he was gonna die and go to hell. Uh -huh. And he was being, he had heard that from the same man from so long that now, since he's been 22, it's just, he just kept feeling like, I need to get this together, I need to get I'm about to die. But I had, we, even he, he even brought it to you, and you was telling him that you don't know when you're going to go. And, but him saying that made, made it weak, made him weak in his heart and made him feel like, he gonna die and go to hell because he may, he ain't gonna have it all together by 22. Mm -hmm. And now that his 23rd birthday coming around, he even though he's in the church now, he still just think about it sometime and just try to get stuff together. And I just, I, I feel like it's my job to remind him that, yeah, you can have time, but at the same time, the Lord could take you at 22. But I, I my question is like, how do I tell him that don't, don't, Try to get it together because that man said you about to die. 
just get it together because this because God said this is the way you're supposed to live. That's that. That's what you said. That's what God said. God didn't put an age on. You just said it. Just, amen. God bless. Yeah, that is it because there is no text age. Is he? Yeah. Does that make him? It doesn't, it doesn't make it a sin for him to still think it sometimes, though, and to still... We all need to step by a game so because long. we might all die in the morning. This yes. thing will blow up before we walk out and all of us die tonight. I'm just going to be real. But the idea is that you move forward with your life to do what's right like you're going to die. That's right. Anytime. So just because that guy said something doesn't mean anything. The key is, is that He's living his life by getting baptized, by coming to church. He's trying to do what's right, living right. So he's on that pathway. And that's what we all need to do. But the idea is that, no, no man can tell you when you're going to die. Even when the doctor said he'll be dead in six months, I'm telling tell you, I heard, I heard a doctor say clearly, you can hear just as clear when a found reported. When he walked up, she, she may last his week. Two years later, she was alive and he was in the grave. That's a true story. <laughs> Family went to the funeral and said, Thank you for having such a wonderful father as our mother's doctor. And he's dead and mama's still living. That's the way. See, you can't, no man can judge that. Only God knows that clock. But yeah, it should remind us always, though, be prepared to leave. All of us, no matter we're young or old. Brother Fritz, I had a proud of thought for us. Thank you, brother Zion. You know, that Baptist preacher is going to be judged for false prophecy. Uh, he's pr prophetically uh, looking at a demise of a creation of God that's not true. So he's going to be judged for false prophecy. And even that, you know, uh, when we look at this subject uh, and we're dealing with the stumbling block, uh, the stumbling block gets removed. It can be removed out of the way uh, by teaching. You know, as Christ said, go into all the world, uh, go into all nations, teach them. Yeah. It says, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, it says, Forbidden to marry and commanded to abstain from meats, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. And this is the type of, uh, the weak brother can be strengthened. He can be a weak brother and he can be strengthened in understanding the temple. Mm -hmm. And... Eating in the temple is, is not a representation of sacrificing unto a false idol. You know, so that weak brother can be strengthened by teaching him through what the Holy Spirit has, has yes. taught. You know, in Acts 15, 29, that you abstain from meats and offer to idols, mm. and from blood and from things strangled, from fornication, uh, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, uh, uh, fare ye well. And now the scripture read, reads, Abstain from meats offered to idols. And they, like I said, they can be taught that this meat is not offered to an idol. You know, as we eat it, no matter, no matter where we go, if we go in this temple or that temple or this store or that store, it's not offered to this idol. Because I, I, like I said before, you know, Egypt, Egypt and India, they have so much false gods. They can create a false god and have a food attached to that false god to the point where there's no food left on earth that you can eat because every food is going to be applied to a, a worship to a false god if you do eat it you know what i mean so so you have to teach that out of them because if you end up eating some chicken over here or some pork over there or some fruits then any any if those gods if those foods are attached to some false god they'll attach you so it has to be taught out of wherever you're around so they can be strengthened so that their mind won't be, you know, weakened where they'll, where they'll perish and they'll be weakened. But brainwashing is powerful Amen. because it, it just, it stays in uh, saints. It stays in leaders for years. And sometimes it's difficult to get it out. But it's, that, that's why it's needful to read, you know, read dance. So what does this say? So they can he, repeat it to themselves Amen. and believe it. So that's all I said. You know, brother, is, uh, as we get ready to go, thank you, brother. When we get... Brother Fritz brought forth a powerful point in that text. If you notice the Jews, the Jewish Christian believers, remember who the Jewish Christian believers are. They are the ones who taught the Gentiles. Paul said we owe them because they taught us. Without the Jewish Christian believers, the Gentiles are still on our way to hell. But he sends a message to the whole church in Antioch saying clearly, abstain from meats of the idol. That doesn't contradict Paul. Paul did not say go and serve meats. And you a Christian to that all I Notice what he said when you go into the meat market. So he says, abstain. What's me by abstain? I'm not gonna invite you to my house and offer you meats that are offered to idols. See, that's different than a tree. 
I can't offer, I can't thank God and tell you this is the meat of Ashtaroth. Let's thank God for it. That's ridiculous, brethren. That's what we start up talking about. That's ridiculous. You're not teaching that there's two gods. You're really confusing me. But the key is, is this statement still stands today. Something strangled in a ritual. That's what you're going to serve me and you my brother-in-law. That's ridiculous. I don't do that. But if I go to a marketplace and I got to eat, Paul said, I know that everything's all you're going to just give me. Don't ask no question because the guy that's serving it, he, he might know who you are. He might see you one day when he visit. You say, give me that. You know what I'm saying? Okay, see, so you have to be aware. That's why the text says, abstain. Don't get around it because there are eyes on us. Eyes all around. We have to be conscious for their sake. The church of God, which is the Lord's church, the Gentile and the Jew. Three different groups. So we need to be aware. And so the idea is that we believe that. I do want to read this verse here before we close. Romans 14. Before we close out. Because we say we want to uh, do this before we leave. I told you to be a verse in here. Because I don't want to uh, say this and not have done it. Romans chapter 14 and verse 22. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. That's text. Happy is he that condemneth not himself. And that thing we chill allow. He said, don't condemn yourself a thing which you allow. So yeah. Paul said, why, you know, is he going to judge me? But at the same time, as we read in chapter 8, I'm not going to do it in front of him. I won't touch no meat. He said, why? Because I am aware of his conscience. So he stops the one judging, and he stops the one eating who has the liberty from hurting the other. He says, and he that doubted. Here's the key verse 23. Listen to this. Now, Paul said the earth is the law and the fullness thereof. It's okay to eat anything. So why does he write verse 23? Because this is the teaching of God. He says, he that doubted is damned. Y'all understand? Damned mean going to hell. If he eat. So I'm going to eat just because I see Jeff eat, but I'm done. I don't know. You, now you got to lose my soul. Now, if nobody could do this, it wouldn't be in the text, bro. Now, no text says don't try to jump to the moon from the earth because you can't do that. Nobody can do it. This can be done. So there are people that are died in hell that did things based on someone else doing it but doubted if they should because your faith is in him or her, not Christ, who said you could or could not do it. That's the key. And so he says here, because he eat it not of faith. He doesn't, not of the faith simply that he believes he can. Because if that was the case, then you could go to heaven without baptizing. Because I don't believe I have to. But that's not, it's about the faith of God. Has my faith connected to the faith of God? What does the text say in the Old Testament? From faith to faith. That's a powerful statement. My faith must connect to that faith. Like precious faith of God that I can read about before I do say or believe anything. And if it doesn't, I'm not getting in. He says, for whatsoever is not a faith of sin. If I did it, I sinned. I ate it. It's nothing but a pork chop. But I ate it because Jeff ate it. And I'm wrong with Jeff. Pretty basic what Jeff said. You know, I love him. Good guy. And Jeff is right. But that's not God. So I see Jeff doing, but I want to go study it to see if I can. I'm confident in the text. I can defend it when someone asks me. Because if someone asks me not, because Jeff ain't. <laughs> I'm not getting in, brother. Yeah. Because I'm not Jeff's servant. I'm Christ's servant. And I must do what he says. I must believe that. If you believe that here, and I remember church, recognize me. Listen to the CD. You can be saved through baptism. First recognize Jesus, Son of God. He died and buried. The third day he rose again. If you believe that, 1 Corinthians 15. The text is very clear. Mark 16 and 16. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be down. What does he believe in? In baptism saves. He's not getting just baptized because his cousin has. He believes baptism saves. And then he said, we teach people that all the time. If you just got baptized get married, you're not going to heaven because you did not believe it saved your soul. You only did it to get that person. You're not getting in even though you was dipped in water by a believer in our church because you didn't do it based on you knew you were lost. And if you didn't, you're going to hell. Have to believe that and understand it. In Acts chapter 2, when Peter was asked in verse 37, men and brethren, shall we do? He said, Change, be baptized. Verse 38. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the sins to be removed, the remission. And for what else? For the Holy Ghost to be given. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Why? The promise is to you, your children, all that our Father, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. In many other words, he testified and encouraged them. Save yourself, which means they are lost, from this unto war, which means perverted generation. Then they that gladly receive his word were baptized the same thing. Three thousand souls added unto them. And they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers, and the fellowship, which is key. Sometimes that's overlooked. That's more than coming to church. That means I'm walking in the fellowship of Christ. First John chapter one, verse five to the end of that chapter. You have to come and walk as Christ in light, not like someone else in light, as Christ. You believe that, and understand and accept it. The scriptures are clear. The Lord, Acts 2 47, add to the church daily, such as should be saved. If you can embrace and believe that, you will understand clearly why the eunuch was not about to be baptized by Philip until the eunuch had the comprehension come out of his mouth. To acknowledge that he understands. He saw the water. Philip saw the water. He said, what does hinder me? He said, if you believe it all your heart. He said, I believe Jesus Christ is the son of God. Now, Philip at this point doesn't know if he's telling the truth. But he gave him instructions. Now, between him and God. Philip's work is done. Other than giving him water. And when he baptized him, we see he must have believed because he was rejoicing. If you believe that, 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, by one spirit. See, the Holy Ghost does the baptism. Are we all baptized into one body? That's the church, Colossians 1 18. Whether you're Jew or Gentile, bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Made to how God has to configure you where well, you can receive the spirit in your spirit. You just can't go up there. I'm going to take a Bible and go say so. You're not saving nobody, including yourself, because you must be added to the Lord's church by the Lord himself. We believe that. The law says this is why I say 1 Peter 3, 21 and 22, the life figure, but even baptism does also now save us. Not the thief on the cross, now save us. Not the putting away the filth of the fish. We understand it's not the water. It happens in the water, but it's not the water. You get operated on in the hospital, but the bricks don't start cutting on your duty in the hospital, but the doctor removes it. The physician, the great physician, removes the sin and he adds his spirit to us. Says, what does this mean something? Why is it so important? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, 1 Peter 3, 21 says. And verse 22 gives him his credentials. What is his portfolio? What does he possess that he can say such a thing? He's in heaven at the right hand of God. Angels of large and power subject to him. They've been made to God. has said, y'all going to be subject to him, my son. Can't do nothing but accept it. And if you believe that, Jesus to Christ said, verse number 10 of chapter 2 of Revelation. He says, Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. So that means he's not lying. It's going to happen to some of them. He says, Give tribulation 10 days. He said, But be thou faithful unto death. You receive the everlasting life. Some people say, Who that's going to be tried if you're a sinner? You're right. If you're righteous, it's a walk in the park if you love Jesus. And he will save you. He will save me. If you want to get baptized now, you're listening. Call the number if you're here. Identify we'll baptize you now. If you're already a member of the church, faithful in the Lord, what is going on in your life that has caused you to lose that faith or to get shaky? What's troubling you? Tell us now while together we stand and sing heaven's invitation. Tenderly Jesus is calling. Calling for you.